everyone. Welcome to this session. Uh, my name is Iris Dean. Uh, I'm a cloud software engineer from Intel. So my focus is try to uh, accelerate and secure source mesh while unleashing the underlying hardware capabilities. Uh, my, I'm currently a Istio maintainer and serving in the Istio steering community member. Uh, so together with me is Fasila. So Fasila, would you please introduce yourself? Hello everyone, I'm Fasila. I work as a cloud native developer at Ericsson Software Technology. Uh, where my primary responsibility is uh, prioritizing uh, the 5G telco requirements in other different open source communities. Uh, I'm a steering committee member and maintainer at Istio. And uh, recently, I'm a CNCF ambassador for the latest 2023 group as well. So here is a quick overview of the agenda, whatever we are planning to cover today. So Iris, Iris is a security maintainer at Istio. So she will be talking about an overview of the certificates in Istio Service Mesh, uh, different types of certificates and uh, the different plugin mechanisms for the same. And she will also touch upon a little bit about uh, confidential computing and uh, her work related to that in Intel. And after that, I will uh, dig a little bit deeper into the certificate revocation list and OCSP stapling support in Istio. We will also talk about uh, the different extended TLS configurations that Istio supports. Um, and then since uh, my experience is basically in the 5G telco security, so we will just uh, talk in brief about the 5G um, telco security overview and then different traffic scenarios in the same and uh, the different uh, certificate configurations for the same as well. Now over to you, Iris, to get started. Thank you, Fasila. So uh, let's first take an uh, overview of all the certificate in Istio Service Mesh. So as you know, uh, security and uh, mutual TIS are very key functions for uh, Service Mesh. So um, for most end users, actually, when they land in Service Mesh in their, pro in their environment, the mutual TIS might be the first choice uh, of the feature they want to utilize. So to achieve the mutual TIS, uh, actually for each of the workload, you need a certificate and a private key to do the TLS communication. So as showed in this picture, in this uh, green um, arrow here, this is the workload certificate. And also in the mesh edge side, either in the ingress gateway direction or the egress gateway direction, you need several different uh, certificate as well. For example, you need to do the TLS termination in the ingress direction or in the egress direction, you also need the certificate to the TLS origination. So you might also, for example, expose multiple backend services through the gateway. So in this case, you might configure multiple gateway and a certificate and a private key for your gateway. So this is another place in service mesh that the certificate is heavily used. Then to achieve the mutual TS communication between the workload, you actually need a you know, root of trust for your workload. So to achieve this purpose, um, basically you need a certificate of service server and another key component in the ECDLD control plan is the registration authority server. So um, both of them will have a certificate. Typically, the certificate for the uh, IE server and the C server is the same, but they can also be different. So we can see some more details for this later. Um, so let's first take a look at the workload certificate. So for workload certificate, actually, it's related about how the envelope proxy get the related certificate, then when the data plane traffic comes, it can utilize this kind of certificate to do the mutual TIS communication. So uh, when you, you uh, I mean, when you onboard in the Intel service mesh, um, there it will be an envelope proxy injected as uh, alongside your workload, we call it a sidecar. So when the envelope is bootstrapped, it actually will get a bootstrap configuration. So in this bootstrap configuration, it will get a default uh, SDS uh, gRPC server configuration. So it will be served as uh, on a very fixed uh, Unix domain socket. So the address is fixed. It's under uh, slash var slash run slash secret slash workload specific UDS slash socket. 
So it means um, by default, in this picture and showed here, the Istio agent itself will act in at the SDS server and will serve all the N1 proxy through this UDS socket. So uh, for the Istio agent side, for, for himself, it has two ways to gather the private key and the third and then deliver it through the SDS channel to the N1 proxy. Uh, so one option is option one. It's also the default option for the Istio proxy. I mean, if you, you know, install Istio using all the default option, this is the option one is the default option. So in this case, uh, the Istio agent will act in both as the SDS server and also as a C client. So it will, you know, um, generate the certificate signing request and send it to the C certificate authority server. So we will see more details later for this option. Uh, for option two, in some kind of, you know, you plug in your key and assert directly for the workload. So, uh, I mean, for the Istio agent, so it can consume all this plug in the key and assert. This is a very uh, popular scenario for, especially for the 5G. So, Facila will show you more details for this option later. Um, then, last but not the least, um, is, you know, since NWAL, is, it will, you know, send the SDS request through this fixed UDS socket. It also means, you know, it opens a door for external world to implement your own SDS server. For example, Spare is, uh, you know, a very popular, um, you know, um, uh, a zero trust uh, standard. So it also utilizes this uh, fixed UDS socket and implement SDS protocol here. So it implement a Spire SDS server. So in this way, it can plug in and integrate with Istio to provide the workload certificate. In your case, I mean, if you have your, your own business needed a requirement, you can also implement your own SDS server here just to make sure, you know, listen to this UDS socket because this is fixed and then follow the SDS protocol. Then you will, you know, plug in your own SDS implementation here. So this is the detailed look about option one, like the Istio agent in this case will acting as a CE client. So now the total flow is like when the NWAL bootstrap, it will send the SDS request to the Istio agent because it's a SDS server. So after the Istio agent get the request, it will generate the private key locally it, can, it will also generate a certificate signing request and will send the certificate signing request through the TLS and the JOT token to the registration uh, authority server, which is running in the ECLD control plan. So the registration authority server, its purpose is to verify the incoming certificate request is valid to make sure only the authorized workload can get the cert signed from me. So it will approve, I mean, if after it has done all the authentication and authorization work, it will approve, if the CSR is coming from a valid workload, it will approve it. And then after the CSR has been approved, then afterward, the certificate authority server will come on board and take care and will sign in the incoming certificate signing request and sign the cert back. And finally, it will deliver the certificate to the Istio agent and the Istio agent will send the certificate and the private key uh, to the NWAL proxy. So this is the whole flow here. So you can see now, finally, the NWAL proxy has got its third signed back. Okay, so next, we will take a look about the certificate, authority server certificate. So you, ca you can see there, multiple options as well. So let's take a look one by one. The first option, option one, is also the default option for Istio. So it means when you install Istio, um, by default, it will create a self-signed C server in its ECLD control plan. So it will generate the private key in his memory locally. It also will you know, generate its certificate. It also will store all these C private key, root third, third chain, C key, and C third into a Kubernetes secret. It's called Istio dash CE dash secret. So um, in the future, when the, when the CS are coming, it will sign the certificate request using this CE private key and assert and then finally deliver to the 
uh, pro, uh, proxy. This is option one. So this also the, sim, the, the simple, simplest way and the quickest way to onboard to Istio. But it also means you will delegate all your workload root of trust to Istio D. So for example, if your organization have your own you know, key, management, key management system, um, this might not be um, you know, a good option for you. Then option two, for example, you have the C and the root third generated outside through another system. In this case, you can upload them to, the, to a, a Kubernetes secret. It's called C third and up, make sure to upload all the kind of material like the root third, the third chain, the CE key, and the CT third. Then after that, you install Istio, and when Istio is started, it will detect whether such kind of secret exists. If it exists, it will not do the self-signed work anymore. It will utilize this kind of root third and the private key directly to sign the certificate for all the, you know, the workload. So this is another option. Um, the option three, you know, um, this is a very, you know, um, I mean, very useful option, uh, especially uh, Kubernetes certificate signing request. This API has been in the, has been very stable recently, so it means we can rely heavily on this kind of API. So in this case, the C server function can be totally disabled in the ESPLD control plane. So it means that only the registration authority server will be there, and will, will be there up and running. It will also write the incoming CSR and make sure you know all the CSR is valid, and then it will do some kind of conversion work, convert the incoming Istio CSR to a Kubernetes CSR, and try and make sure you know the C Kubernetes CSR has been approved and generate a related Kubernetes CSR custom resource in the Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, any um, third party uh, which can consume Kubernetes certificate signing requests can handle the incoming uh, certificate signing request and sign the certificate to the related workloads. So this also opens a door for the better multi-tenancy support. We, we can see a picture later. So the first, the first option is external CA. So in this case, um, you can define some environment variable when you start Istio. So in this case, the Istio agent will directly talk to the external CA server. So it will totally ignore the, you know, the Istio D control plan part. It will go through the external CA server. So this is very suitable. For example, you already have a very matured or um, established C server in your organization. So in this case, just leverage your existing asset and uh, integrate with Istio. So uh, as we said, options through uh, actually uh, opens a door for you to give you better multi-tenancy support. So this is an example here. So in this diagram, you can see there are two tenants, tenant one and tenant two. So for each of the tenant, um, when, they, you mean, when the Istio agent generated the CSR, it actually can carry a signer information. For example, for tenant one, all my workload, I want it, all my workload certifi certificate is signing from this signer like tenant one. And for tenant two, all my CSR is, signer, is signed from signer tenant two. Then using the Kubernetes CSR integration method, you can you know, generate different Kubernetes CSR signing requests in the Kubernetes CSR signing request custom resource, there is a field called the signer. So the, um, Kubernetes, uh, the, the Istio registration authority server can grab the uh, signer information from workload dynamically and fill in the signer information to the CSR. And then finally, in the right side, you can have different signers for different uh, tenants. But in, in this example, I can have a signer operator here uh, for one tenant, I can leverage a certain manager uh, to sign uh, for other workload. So in this way, you can see, even in the single service mesh, you can have multiple CA, and also it means um, the communication between different tenants' workload will be broken because they are not signed from the same root of trust. Um, then the last scenario, uh, you know, uh, which heavily uses the certificate is gateway. So for gateway, also two options here. Option one, the default option. So in this case, 
um, ETLD itself will acting as the SDS server. So for end users, what you need to do is you need to upload your private key and third to this uh, to different Kubernetes secret. So for example, there is a service credential secret one. Then you can define your own uh, ETL gateway customer resource, or even you 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 know you know leverage the Kubernetes uh, gateway API to define a gateway customer resource. In the gateway customer resource, you define a credential. This credential will point to this secret. So in this case, the ETL D SDL server will watch all this kind of secret and try to convert the secret to the SDS response, and it will send the certificate and the priority key back through the ETL agent and finally go to the N1 proxy. In this case, it's the gateway. The another option is here, uh, option two. So actually, uh, N1 can, is also listening on this UDS socket. It's called var slash run slash secret slash credential UDS slash socket. So it also means uh, you can implement your own SDS server and make sure you know serve on this UDS socket. So you in this way, you can you can see you can also provide your own SDS implementations SDS implementation to serve your ingress gateway or even egress gateway. So this is something you can check about. Um, then. Um, the, you know, all those multi TLS give you a lot of benefit here, but uh, in current upstream implementation, uh, as I said, third and also private key are very key um, component when you do the TLS communication, especially the TLS handshake, right? So currently, all the private key is stored in clear text for all, both, uh, all these three scenarios, like the CE case, uh, if you see in the left bottom part, you can see, you can use in this sim simple kubectl command to very easily grab the C private key. So it also means the attacker can grab the private key and break your whole mesh traffic. And also for mutual TIS, the, the, you know, the private key is in clear text in memory. It's also dangerous. So how to solve, solve this problem? Uh, in Intel, we have a solution which is called in Intel Software Guard Extension. So it provides a process-based trusted execution environment for you. And this technology is, is totally based on CPU itself. It means no additional hardware is needed here, like some hardware security module. You, know, you, do not, you do not need them. You can purely rely on the CPU here. So this capability is available starting from our third gen uh, Intel Xeon processor. So in this case, um, the SDX will provide you a confidential memory region. So in, in this picture, you can see the application has been divided into two parts, the trusted part and the untrusted part. Only the trusted part can access this memory region. For other applications or other software, even if you are an operating system or BIOS or firmware, you are not allowed to access this memory region. So in, in, in the service management scenario, we actually put all these private keys in the SDX enclave. Um, for in another word, this, sec this, this secured memory region is called SGX enclave. So we have three user cases here. So we can store the private keys for gateway, for workload, for C server in the SGX enclave. So in this case, um, after if you're using this solution, if you go to the cluster and you want to try to get the secret now, uh, if you try to grab the C private key here, you can see you can get nothing because all the private key is guarded in, the, in this SDX enclave. So this solution has been totally upstreamed, so open sourced. So if you are interested, uh, make sure you check out these two repo here. The first one, HSM SDS server. Uh, this is work for the gateway and the workload certificate. The trusted certificate is issuer, this actually a certain manager, you know, it can coexist with your certain manager um, uh, environment, so it's actually uh, just a certain manager issuer, but it will make sure your CE private key has been guarded in the SDX enclave. Uh, so next, I will hand over to Facila to walk you through more details. Thank you, Iris. Uh, thanks uh, for the great uh, presentation so far um, about uh, the service mesh security overview. Um, 
Yeah, so there were a lot of options shown by Iris, so don't think it's like very complicated with Istio, but it's more like all the complex things are made possible for you uh, so that all the different scenarios are working as expected. So now let's take a look at some additional extended features supported in Istio security architecture. So basically, outside of a certificate's natural life, uh, there are two main ways a CA can take a non-expired certificate out of service uh, and make it invalid. So those two mechanisms are like CRL, that is a certificate revocation list, and the other one is OCSP, online certificate status protocol. So well, let's first um, see about the CRLs. So CRLs are basically like uh, if you see here, it's, uh, it's like a list of revoked certificates. Um, it's maintained by the C CAs and the CRS distribution point, which, which can be residing outside. And the peers are meant to request this list uh, from the CA during the TLS handshake and uh, verify whether the certificate is still valid or invalid. So it's basically like a blacklist of certificates that a CA revokes prior to their assigned uh, certificate expiration dates. So this diagram gives you an overall picture of how the CRL implementation is done in Istio. Uh, so at Ingress Gateway, we want to check the revocation status of client certificates. Uh, so we should check at the server side if the client certificate is valid. Similarly, at Egress Gateway, the revocation status uh, uh, of the um, received server certificate could be checked. So this, the solution is not just limited to the gateways. If the sidecars are supporting TLS termination or origination, so we can use this at sidecar as well for the external traffic, and we can have the CRL check enabled in a similar fashion as the gateways. Uh, so this comes for us as a 3GPP 5G specification requirement for security. So many of the other enterprise use cases may not need it, but yeah, in the 5G world we have the 3GPP standard where there are additional security requirements and it states like the CRL status check should be supported for external certificate validation. So this is one such scenario. Istio also supports the OCSP stapling. So OCSP is like a protocol used to check the revocation status of individual certificates. So previously we talked about CRL, which was like a list of revoked certificates. Uh, but here it's like applied to a single certificate rather than a list. So a peer upon receiving the certificate communicates with the CA to check uh, the status of that particular certificate. So in Istio, we will not implement the basic the overall OCSP support, uh, rather only OCSP stapling. So in stapling, it's like instead of each client having to request a revocation status of the certificate, uh, the server which owns the certificate and serves the content, that requests uh, the CA for its validity and sends its own status in the form of a signed time-stamped add-on. So the server can present both the certificate and the staple in, res in the response to the client. So in Istio, what we have is uh, the OCSP stapling support at the ingress gateway. Uh, so that's what we do. Now, Istio also allows you to configure additional TLS parameters in some of the scenarios based on the requirements. So it's a bit unstructured currently, so in maybe it's certain parameters are supported only on the ingress side. Certain other parameters are there on the egress side, but the documentation clarifies that. Uh, so it's like, for example, there is an option to configure the cipher suits, ECDH curves, or, and even the signature schemes. If cipher suits is specified, the TLS listener will only support uh, those specified cipher lists, but it's like only in TLS 1.2. As you know, TLS 1.3 does not allow this configuration. Similarly, ECDH curves as well. But yes, based on the requirements that have come in, um, we have ECDH curves support only for the mesh external configuration. Mesh external means the traffic 
that's coming from outside the mesh to, the, to inside the mesh. Um, signature schemes also can be configured, but Envoy supports configuring signature schemes, but there are no standard Istio APIs for configuring the same thing. Uh, but yes, we can use the Envoy filter provided by Istio to configure the signature schemes. Now let's take a quick look at the overall 5G telco system architecture before I talk about the specific traffic scenarios. Um, we don't have to go into details about it, but just we'll just explain how this can be translated to the service mesh use cases. So many of these things will be already covered by Iris, but yeah, it makes sense to explain a little bit on how service mesh applies in the 5G core. So in the 5G telco world, it uses the same elements as the previous generations like 4G. So you have a user equipment, and then the radio access network, which is the RAM, and then, yes, you have the 5G core network. So in the figure here, the user plane has the network functions and elements involved in the transport of user data. Um, that's shown at the bottom level in the yellow background, and in the blue background, whatever is there, it consists of all the network functions in the signaling plane or the control plane. So the, sig the, the network functions are like uh, the applications in a Kubernetes cluster. So they have, if you see the blue background ones, they have HTTP2 interfaces, and the service mesh or, or Istio service mesh basically comes to apply only in that area in the signaling plane because, of course, you know that whenever service mesh is introduced, there is some latency compromises which we have to do, which is not possible in the data plane and not acceptable in the data plane for real world traffic like the 5G scenario. So we use uh, service mesh only in the control plane. So at the same time, in the same blue background, there can be some services which are onboarded to service mesh, some others which are not onboarded. Um, so it's like in the same Kubernetes cluster, you will have some applications with sidecars and some without sidecars. So all these different combinations uh, lead to different traffic scenarios, which we will explain in this slide. So she, Iris already explained about how the certificates are configured within the mesh. But uh, additionally, she also talked about the gateway certificates. So we already know how external to service mesh traffic works and also mesh to external traffic works in this diagram. But as I told before, there can be certain cases like within the cluster, we can have a mesh external service, which is basically like an application without a sidecar container. It has to talk to another application or service with a sidecar. So overall, this results in like uh, four different scenarios. And uh, there are applications within the cluster which have to talk to applications with sidecar. And it doesn't make sense to come through an ingress gateway or egress gateway for applications within the same cluster itself. So to solve such cases, we will have to use sidecar-based TLS termination and origination. So this slide, yes, it talks about so the different, the four types of traffic which I talked about, talked about currently. So it can be like external to service mesh through an ingress gateway, service mesh to external through an egress gateway, or service mesh to cluster internal without a gateway directly the sidecar uh, will terminate the TLS or the cluster internal to service mesh without an egress gateway where the sidecar will originate the TLS. So total four cases. And it just talks about what are the different Istio custom resources that can be used to configure these certificates in those different scenarios. So yeah, that's all we had to discuss about. And then if, if you know about the Istio user survey, yeah, we are inviting feedback from Istio users about the usability of the different features. So please scan the QR code on the left-hand side to give us feedback uh, for Istio. And on the right-hand side, it's the feedback about the session. And yes, if you have any 
questions, we can take it now. Thank you. Thank you. So I had a, I had a question. Um, certificates in Service Mesh seem kind of like a choose your own adventure book, if you understand that reference, um, in that there's lots of different ways to do them, and it's seemingly lots of different ways to do them badly. Do you, like in your infinite wisdom of the people on the stage, have recommendations on what you would suggest as the purest or simplest route to pursue certificates in a service mesh environment? Is, this a, is the question about which option here is the simplest and easiest in Istio, or you're asking about all the different service meshes? Okay, okay so which, which scenario are you talking about? The CA part, or the workload, or the gateway? Because it, it's different. Oh, I mean, okay. Yes. Okay. so um, because there are several places that has certificate like the CA server, the gateway, the workload. So what are you, you know, specific asking? You are asking the CA, what's the best option for CA or workload or, or gateway? Um, you know, it depends. It's hard to answer it because every organization have different situation. For example, if your organization has already a very mature CA solution and your mature key management system, maybe the external CA one is the best for you because you can reutilize, re reutilize all your existing investment just to integrate with Istio is good enough. If you are not under this case, um, I might support you like using the plug insert, um, but in this case, you need to take care of the rotation by yourself because all this certificate is plugged in by yourself. So you need to make sure um, the certificate and the private key in the secret is up to date, and then Istio D can pick it up. Then the other option, like if you are already using the certain manager, like such kind of ecosystem a solution, maybe the Kubernetes CSI is a good choice for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah, sure. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if you could go back to the slide about the why the Kubernetes secret was um, insecure and the command you used to get the private key. I was just curious. And if you could just unpack that again. Is this the one? Which one? You just want to go back to the slide? Um, it was the one about why the, the Kubernetes secret uh, for uh, the Istio cert was insecure. This one? Yeah. So what's the question is like how you gather this private key here? Right, yeah. I just wanted to take a picture of the slide. <laughs> oh, 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 just I want to take a picture. Okay. <laughs> Got you. Thanks. Thank you.